okay, I was trying to explain here um, the things that I did on this um, example of the become place application. Right now it's not working, but at least I had some advance and I want to show you what I did until I don't remember the things that I did before. So the first thing that we need to do is to download the Gazebo packages. Uh, this is because, for example, in all versions of Gazebo, if you try to grasp something, uh, the audio is slip or pause from the robotic arm. That's because of the physics. So this plugin is that thing. You can download it from the GitHub of Jennifer Bueller. Uh, she has uh, an example, the Gazebo package here. And we are using uh, the Gazebo Grass plugin. For example, if you want to use the Gazebo Grass plugin, you have to identify your robotic arm. Uh, you have to put the phone link and the gripper links. For example, in the case of of the uh, UR5, we have the fingertips. Um, uh, I think it's another, let's see, was C. So here in my sacro, I put the grass plugin. Here, the name is your file, and we got the gripper finger linker knuckle link uh, for the palm, and for the gripper, the gripper finger one finger tip link. I will explain where those names come from later. At least, let me explain uh, where where the different configuration that we made. Next, uh, we modify the pick and place here the launch file a little bit uh, that's practically I made if you want you can publish a static frames from the cubes if you want and also it caused the cubes work from the simulation to launch on the on the movie config on, on the robot IQ 85 uh, simulation so in the robot IQ 85 simulation we got here and we and launch everything related to the Cebo, to the controllers, and also uh, Arby's. Uh, I commented this line because we are in this pipeline not using the the perception. So later I will enable it. Next things that uh, we must be aware about is that. Uh, for example, if you launch the simulation and it uh, take a lot, you can modify the plugin. No, the plugin, no, the launch file related to the configuration about okay, that's a movie. Uh, the planner execution, I think, or the trajectory execution here. This allows the custom controllers to load quickly. For example, it will, if you do this with, without this line, you probably will see that the controllers take a lot of time, more than 30 seconds, and bypass the, the, the controller uh, that we're trying to, to, to load. So for the controllers that are not loading correctly in, when we launch the simulation, we bypass those that uh, we don't load correctly, and then we can launch the controllers that we did on the previous video about the simulation of the robot IQ, the joint position controller and the robot control node. So this will ensure you to bypass the three seconds. Next, um, another thing that we did was to Okay, we modify a little bit the movie to just the camera and publish some frames only, not all. I mean, a view some frames of the TF, not all. And in the end, uh, we, mo we moved uh, some models here to the model folder to load correctly and uh, quickly. Also, we modified for for uh, Gazebo to load the 
this folder we modify the I think the package XML in the export we explain to Gazebo to load the model path from the, this package slash models models and here are the models I will add other models that the, that are not here and are messy like the Kinect or for example here is the the mesh for mesh for the Kinect I will uh, move it later in that version it will be stayed here and also we can do more from here no I could, I could close that uh, and then I will explain more about uh, what I did and uh, what is working pretty well is the planning scene for example I made a simple class in this class you have the constructor, constructor and, the, and the structure for the collision task or explain the uh, specify the collision objects uh, we also have two types of functions or methods in the class one to set primitives and the other to set meshes also uh, we can specify the fixed frame as it were uh, or other that you want to be the fixed frame and also we have enumeration related to the type of primitive object that we will we will like to uh, add to the planning scene like box cylinders pair or cone and this period function you don't need this just to clear the vector when we add a collision object to to a collision task so for example uh, here is the const uh, constructor we specify the fixed frame as the word also the, the structure uh, is empty because we don't want more than that and this erase the vector of the objects and here it comes uh, where I specify the primitives. First, we need the object ID. For example, we want to call it coupon, we want to call it table, anything. Uh, we respect with, uh, with which frame will be the base frame. In this case, will be the board frame. It will be common to, to the robotic arm and also the Kinect. Also, uh, we specify cases for box, cylinder, spur, and cone. As you see, for specifying a box, we need uh, three dimensions uh, or, or three primitive measurements like white height and, and length. Also, for the cylinder, we only need the height and the radius. For a spur, we only need the radius. That's because uh, we're resizing to one. Uh, for a cylinder, we're resizing to two. For the box, we're resizing to three. And um, for the cone, we're resizing to. Okay, I. Here. That will be okay. Resizing to two. Next, uh, we'll create the, the vector. And we are the primitive of the object and also the pose of, pose of the object. Also, push back the object to the collision objects and that's all well for the mesh we first specify the which, where is the object ID where is the fixture frame we create a mesh file based on the uh, on the path also we need to scale the the mesh file because if you do, don't keep the proportions obviously it will be a lot bigger than your other ob objects in the in the world so it will scale the, the mesh file and also uh, we construct the, the mesh file uh, we specify which mesh file will be loaded and also in the position and orientation we push back again the object and the poses and also add the object to the scene and finally push back the object to the collision object but that's only a vector of collision objects it's not actually publish on the scene so for publishing on the scene we will do in the main file first we specify a node and also a single spinner because some functions probably will be blocking functions 
and also we have the planning scene interface I call it planning scene also the uh, where are the mesh file for the beam or the dumpster and also the uh, table uh, that we are posing the UR5 we then start to specify and uh, here is the UR5 base is the, is the it's the table for the UR5 I will explain to you so uh, we will be uh, putting on the planning scene the base of the UR5 next uh, we specify every one of the legs positions and also on the end we uh, push the primitive to the collision objects next also we make the same for the kinetic pillar it's a cylinder and we push the poles and the dimensions also for the dumpster the dumpster is a mesh file so we call another function the function that loads mesh files and also we specify the paths, the poles and the dimensions of the mesh file or the scaling same way for the table mesh the table mesh is this one um, also I scale the, the table and finally in the end we also uh, add to the collision objects like three cubes that are here and in the end we add all those collision objects to the planning scene so one thing to note when you load your object and if it doesn't appear it's probably the center of the object it's not the center of the object because somewhere of the designer and you will have to expand Arby's to see where the object is and try to uh, play with the positions for example here so, uh, the object of the dumpster doesn't have the the origins at the origin so I have to scale uh, or move it I mean, uh, translate the object from uh, the space to the position that I want so if you don't see your object that is loaded that's because probably the origin is not the origin or it's not inside the object it's uh, far far away from the object and you have to to see that in Arby's so that's it for the planning scene um, let's go to the pick and place for the pick and place uh, I'm still working on it it's not working at all but we have some several functions right now I have only this one implemented uh, probably in the future I will overload more I mean work on the overload of these functions uh, we also get the planning plane get, get the link or an effector link here are the planning groups for the arm for the gripper and the move group for the arm for the gripper uh, the operation of the gripper we can open or close the gripper uh, close the gripper is a function, open gripper is a function, attach and detach objects are other functions uh, support surface is necessary if you are doing a pick and place application you need to specify which one is the support surface and, that, and those are private letters, probably I put uh, move uh, to the private uh, field this, those functions but Right now, I will uh, keep it in that place. We also have the planning scene and also which object we could attach or we watch which object we will grasp. And we start the pick and place for the initializing the node, the arm, and the gripper groups. Also, here uh, we can move to a pose in the specific. First, we get the current state of the joints also get the current state of the arm and compare uh, the arm joint model group to the joint positions now we can then try to plan and if we succeed we can move to the correct pose we, we set first the, the pose uh, first uh, looking for 
the translation, therefore the rotation, and it's better to trans uh, to make this Rotlich law notation in your mind in your mind than the quaternion, at least for me. And finally, we transform the rotations to a quaternion to set to the orientation. Finally, set the pose and sleep some time to see the the animation and then move the arm. Next, um, we have a function to operate the gripper, same thing above for the gripper here. And so to close the gripper, uh, if you have one more join position, in my case, when I do that in Gazebo because one is mimicking other, I have only one. So in your case, probably it will be something like this. And you have to specify all the joint positions that are involved. You will see that in Gazebo. I mean, um, in, a, in the mobile setup assistant when you set the gripper. And if the operation is close the gripper, we move uh, or contract the, the, the gripper to grab the object. I must remind you that that's not the best way. The best way is to use the grass plugin because, uh, I mean, the grass uh, moving or moving interface because they calculate how much and where are the points and so on. So, right now I'm trying to make this thing to fire up and work. I think that is not happening right now. Next, we send the join values to the gripper. And if we succeed for the plan of the gripper, we move the gripper. And that's all. That's for attaching the object. In example, I am just testing with a cube, the first cube, this one from the right. And we will attach to the gripper base link. We could attach to any link on the gripper or on the arm, but I am attaching to the gripper base link. We also uh, make this object the grasp object and move to the planning C interface to mark it as attached. So for the dash is the same thing, just the only difference thing is that the operation is to remove the object and add it to the planning C. Finally, that's a function just to get the planning frame in order for the N effector this one to open the gripper, we call the operate gripper to pause and detach, detach the object and for close the gripper, we operate the gripper P2 and attach the object obviously. And for the supporting surface, surface we could specify for the arm or the gripper will be, where will be the surface. Probably it would only be enough for the arm, but I put both, the, both of the move groups. I think the end is pretty simple. What I'm trying to do, we first, uh, I will change to pick and place just to uh, specify more uh, in the node. We here we start the node, I mean, we call the node and the async spinner. We use the async spinner because these functions are blocking below especially the move, uh, for the move group. We get the planning scene, I mean the planning frame, that would be the word, the end effector link, and we specify the support table as kappa table, that is the same link that we specify in the URDF. Also, we first move or approach the cube to the, cube to the, the I mean the arm to the cube from above, so the arm will be moved, will be positioned over the cube. Next, we will be uh, at least at the minimum position of the cube. We will close the gripper. We will try to move the cube up and then plan for the dumpster beam. But it's not working. Now, it's because a uh, collision that I have to disable it. So I will. Uh, load here the application first. We'll do a cat key make, and um, only we will make the package with the UR5 pick and place. Okay, 
next way get here that okay next we will launch the pick and place application first Will take a little bit because my PC is a little bit slower. So you will see in a minute how everything is working or loading at least fine. You will see here in a moment, uh, green message that are message referring for the grass plugin. So I will wait a little bit. Ignore those errors. Those are for Likinet because we are uh, loading the uh, respective uh, uh, plugin two times. So here it is. If everything goes fine and you load the plugin correctly, you get this green message that we load in the we're loading the Gazebo Grass plugin. We have here which collisions we are, we got involved. In. Where are those names? And also the topic about the contacts. Where where are the controllers that are loading? The yeah, control the grip controller, and we load those other controllers the joint state controller, the air controller, and so, and so on. For, so for example, here, uh, how do you know which names are? Because you got here to Gazebo, and in models, in the UR5, you have to specify any of the links names. So, in example, we will we get from the palm and from the uh, tips links from here. Wait a little. I will wait. Okay, here are. So the gripper finger one inner knuckle link and gripper finger two inner knuckle link and the gripper finger one finger tip link and the finger two tip link. Both are from the arm, two are five and are related to the palm and for the gripper and are located here. So the finger one knuckle link is the palm link. This is bombing, and the other is the finger. Just look for the finger tip link that is the contact surface that will be on the on the element or the object. So then, uh, oh sorry, then we will start just to see that everything at least is working more or less. Okay, here we have the simulation in Gazebo, and you see that there are objects present, and here are not. So we want we have to publish the planning scene. That's what we did in the simple node of the planning scene. So for that, you have to run and the node for the UR5 pick and place mm. planning scene and in the end it will load the same objects that are here on the simulation.
here they are. So the plan scene is working correctly. Now the problem here is when I try to grasp a dash and move the object practically. So this is the stage where I am. I am stuck here uh, for one week. So I will try to fix that. Um, in the meantime, I will advance in another projects. For example, uh, looking for a per section pipeline, trying to filter some things, do offensive applications, both in parallel until uh, I finish to uh, to make it this work. I don't know if I could do that because I have a lot of problems with the URPy and, and the Civil, but I will try. Plus one, or five, pick and place, and pick and place. So first, the first thing that it will do is try to uh, open the gripper. Um, right now it's open, so you will see nothing. That's why it will start to blink because it will reach the position. But the position is that position. The next thing is to move above the queue. If you modify the, the pick and place application just for the for um, Arby's, I'm pretty sure it will work. But because I'm involving the simulation in Gazebo, it will not work correctly. So uh, here, next, I will try to find the location on the object. take a lot of time because my computer also I don't uh, tune the controllers of the UR5 I'm using the default configuration so probably if you use uh, a tune controller it will go faster also if you change the plan algorithm perhaps for example if you use uh, IK, IK fast or uh, no no IK fast is just for the joint values for your data so here you see the arm is approaching to the planet position the next thing is to Put the creeper below a little bit, not uh, not more than that. And if you see, uh, we are trying to close the creeper. So here is the creeper closed. I will try to attach the object, and the object will be attached. But here is a problem because I have a collision between the finger, the steps, and the where are. Okay. A contact between cube one and gripper finger two, gripper finger tip link, which constitutes a collision. So I have an option, I think. An option is to disable that from the collision matrix that I don't want to do. And the other option is programmatically do that. So disable the, the ACM or a lower collision matrix from the the cube and or the object and the tip links and so on so at least it's more or less working sorry for the, uh, that 
because I actually like to upload uh, a complete video of everything working or partial things. But if I do not, if I do not that in that way, I will probably will not remember everything that I did to make it work. Uh, it will be a little bit lost. So that's all. Hope uh, in the next few weeks I will try to get the solution and move for better dynamic approaches like GRASP uh, uh, in MOVID and also the, perfect, the perception pipeline. So that's all. Thanks.